And so the 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar commences as we saw our first game of the World Cup uh, in the books and that in terms of doing these review for this World Cup, which I'm planning to do every single game, uh, including the World Cup final, I will be doing these review during the afternoon or even in early evening my time because uh, unless I have those off days where I'm not working and I'll be able to watch some of these games and basically do the review after the last game is over, they're just simply I can't can't do the review before I get off work and even then I still have to watch the replay of those games because most of the games that's taking place is unfortunately during time where I'm either sleeping or the the fact that I have to go go to work during during those time but with that being said uh today i was able to pretty much not only watch the replay of this while i was at work during my lunch break during my break and also uh at my the time i get back from home but also the fact that when i watched this game you know i will say that this was probably the worst performance i've seen a host nation uh play in their first ever game to kick off the world cup i mean we've seen some memorable kind of performance in terms of the host nation play in the first game Obviously, the, the last World Cup when Russia dropped five on Saudi Arabia was definitely one of the more memorable ones. This was not, not the case for Qatar. And I will say that, you know, in my prediction video where I predicted Ecuador was going to finish dead last, and I think I even said that I won't be surprised that prediction is going to be wrong. Oh boy, I will say that not only it's going to be wrong, but it's going to be very, very wrong. Because I, I will say that I really underestimate how good this ecuador side especially some of the youngster on this team and that some of the talent on on this team and also the fact that you know uh with the way that i've heard that senegal might not have their most important player in sadio mani in these group stage game there's a legit chance that ecuador could actually make it out of the group and the way that they of course play tonight they definitely have a shot to do so now again i'm not sure is that a lot to do with the fact that they play well in this one or the fact that as i mentioned qatar play absolutely terrible throughout this game and all the the hype and all the talks of, of how well they have done in other competition and they definitely did not show it in in this game now uh in the first half and one of the interesting thing about uh the first half whistle that was being blown is that you know how every time when there's a major kind of tournament they have like that countdown from the pa announcer and then at and they do like 10, 9, 8, 7, and then at 1, the, the referee uh, blows for the first half whistle. Well, it seems like the referee was having none of it. Like, he said, you know what, I'm going to blow the, the whistle. I'm not even going to wait till when the stadium PA announcer count down to 1. So, yeah, you blow the whistle with 5 seconds left. And, you know, I, I was expecting, well, what is the PA announcer going to do? Is he going to just kind of stop count? down or is he going to continue well it turns out he kind of continue and i i'll give him credit because he could have easily just stopped there realizing that oh i maybe kind of screw up the 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 timing in terms of counting down when exactly the the 2022 world cup is going to be begin but he kind of continue and then you know it kind of felt a little awkward the fact that he was still counting down even though you know we're already like three or four seconds into the game but that was kind of an interesting thing that that I, I found and kind of had a little chuckle uh, to see kind, kind of the, the, the beginning of the World Cup. Kind of had, had a little bit of a mis, mishap with the way that they missed time in terms of when the countdown begins with the, the first half whistle to commence the 2022 FIFA World Cup. Now that being said, uh, in the third minute, we didn't waste any time before we already had some, some controversy in this game. Like, you know, we're just fresh off of the MLS season and you mentioned how many I talk about about uh, referee controversy and the usage of VAR that is being bad. Well, it seems like in this World Cup, they basically saw saw what MLS did, and they say, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try to one up in terms of it. Though I will say that this call, you know, at first I thought thought it was it was not the right call, and I thought this was a classic example of uh, of the fact that it seems like Qatar are really bribing the official to to try to win the game. Like I, I saw on Twitter, there was a lot of memes talking about how how uh, Qatar was clearly handing the money to the VAR officials so they don't find themselves one nothing down after just three minutes. And speaking of which, uh, this controversial moment happened when Valencia basically puts it into the back of the net, only for the goal to be disallowed for offside. And again, originally, I thought that it, it, it was the wrong call because you can clearly see that there was at least a couple of de defender um, back in that Valencia. He looked like he was, he was miles on site but then i remember and i had to do a little bit of a deep research in term 
to this that there was this specific rule and that this doesn't happen often but when the goalkeeper of course uh comes off his, his lines and that uh valencia actually actually was ahead of the goalkeeper so in this case the goalkeeper was actually ahead of the offside line and what that basically means is that you know even though there was a qatar defender there he was basically acting like like the a goalkeeper with him him being on the line and ready to kind of block this one off the line so with that being the case it seems like it was going to be uh well there was actually another 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 qatar defender in the vicinity but now he's going to be act as kind of the the, the last man back I, again it's very confusing to cut kind to explain it but uh you know i, I did have to kind of do a de bit of a deep research because you know with the way that fox basically tried to to explain it and especially uh their rule analyst joe matchin trying to trying to explain it yeah he did he not only did not do a good job in terms of explaining it but he I, I don't think he even knows what the heck heck, heck uh, was this supposed to mean. And it, it actually took until like about 10 minutes later uh, when I think Stu Holden kind of started to mention why exactly uh, it is an offside. And again, even then, with that that being the rule being in place, I thought it was very close. And that we also saw a, a first time of, of these kind of VAR uh, technology that FIFA basically is, is using where, you know, unlike in MLS, basically, we, we basically look at it in the naked eye. Uh, FIFA actually have a VAR technology where it can actually use the, the technology to kind of measure in terms of where it is offside and where it is not something similar to the, the Premier League, but it, instead of lines, they actually kind of had like a little grit to do it. And they saw that it seems like Valencia leg was just in an offside position. And again, like it or 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 hated uh in the end i think they did did get get that one correctly but again it doesn't stop the fact that there's what was already a lot of people saying that yeah this game is already going to be raked and 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 it also doesn't help the fact that there was a accusation that you know uh before this game it seems like like qatar actually decided to try to bribe ecuador and trying to to uh lose this game on purpose which if that is going to be the case then oh boy we're basically going to have a 2006 kind of uh, uh, kind of scandal that we saw in Italy a couple of years ago. But uh, that being said, uh, besides that controversial call, I thought Ecuador kind of started to dominate the, the possession. And Qatar, you know, as expected, they were trying to go into their deep low block. That's kind of what they, they wanted to do. They trying to trying to sit back and absorb pressure and maybe caught Ecuador uh, napping on the counterattack. But it didn't work because in the 15 minute, a penalty was given to Ecuador as El Shib uh, was, was uh, well actually Al she brought down uh, Valencia in the box. I forgot to put Valencia there. He did not uh, got brought down in the box. It was him the one that of course c commits this foul here. And I thought the Qatar goalkeeper Al she he was very shaky early in this game. And again I, I understand because a lot of these Qatari players you know this is it, the the first. I mean this is not really the first big tournament that they have. But you know in a World Cup like that you know that there's going to be a lot lot of nerves and that i think there were some of these qatar players that were not used to to the nerves and especially the goalkeeper too because he was very 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 sloppy especially come off his lines either way too early or way too late and in this case just way too too uh late there and get caught in no man's land and have to ball down valencia in the box which uh valencia of course won the penalty he took the penalty and he scored here to give ecuador a one nothing lead and that's how we get our first first goal of the world cup from the penalty spot but after that it was all ecuador continuously as you know qatar again they were just getting pinned deep they cannot get out they keep turning the ball over in their their the the midfield uh ibra then then blasted high from long range great to see romero uh, ibra playing for this ecuador team never forget that he is forever a loons player and it seems like it's like fs1 kind uh, want to laminate that because there was many times where i think john strong had mentioned Ibrar, former Minnesota United player, and that again, it's great to see see the 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 player that he has now developed to to be, and that again, you know, maybe I do have some regret the fact that Minnesota probably shouldn't have sold him off to uh, I think it was Pachuca that they sold him off just a couple of months ago. But that being said, uh, in the 31st minute, Ecuador would make it two nothing, and guess who it is? It's Erna Valencia scoring from Seattle to give Ecuador a 2 nothing lead. They mentioned that Valencia have scored the, the last six goals for Ecuador and that he's been incredible for him. And at that point, I thought the route could be on because this looked like one-way traffic. It looked like 
Ecuador was going to really, really uh, thump Qatar at a rate where we saw in the la last World Cup of how Russia absolutely destroyed so Saudi Arabia with them putting two, three, four, and then eventually five past the net. Uh, but the first shot from the host did came in the 33rd minute as Hassan would would blast it into the Persian Gulf. And, you know, I know that might sound like an exaggeration, but, yeah, it was a very bad bad miss there from him. Uh, the game, I thought, then kind of started to slow down. So why not let's show some vibes that is happening in the stands. I mean, that's kind of something we've seen, seen in the World Cup where there's always cameras looking at the... Uh, looking at uh, or filming the how the fans basically show their emotion. And I, I kind of like that because it kind of just shows the emotion of the game. But they were mostly showing vibes and how it feels like, like um, you know, Qatar they, themselves kind of also had a supporter section. And I got to say, that, that their, their supporter section, it was very loud. Like they, they were basically singing and chanting even when their team was down 2-0. Down and they kind of continue for a throughout the game and for a lot of people that had kind of question in terms of the support that Qatar was going to have uh the fact fact that you know again we'll see whether or not you know there may be some will say that that support group clearly was pay pay and they had to of course sing throughout the whole whole game but even then it, it does add add some good atmosphere and that again uh, I know it might not sound, sound good that the fact that they maybe pay their fans to kind of sing song and stuff like that but at the end of the day i rather kind of have that than just have a game where there's just no atmosphere whatsoever kind of a dull kind of environment which that that was kind of one of the things that i was worried coming into this one though uh that being said in the fifth minute of stoppage time almanes had a big opportunity for qatar and he's definitely going to be thinking about this later tonight because he had a free header from six yards out there but missed just why there it was a complete blown assignment uh there from ecuador and they got away with it big time but we do head to half time with ecuador leading to nothing now in the second half i thought qatar finally started to step the, up their lines and it was about time to do so because they can't simply just keep playing defensive and and let ecuador just kind of, kind of be put into cruise control because you know up to that point you know ecuador they they were just kind of, kind of almost putting in cruise control here they weren't really attacking too much they know that that they can just kind of keep possession and and, and, and win this one easily because Qatar wasn't really threatening them and they weren't putting any pressure on them to maybe maybe force the ball move very quickly. So because of that, that's why I felt, feel like throughout this game, you know, we didn't really have a lot, lot of chances. It's kind of becoming a little bit of a, uh, of a dull game. Though, that being said, you know, when, when we talk about how Qatar put more pressure uh, when Ecuador in their own half, it kind of only lasted for the first five minutes because after that, uh, I thought Ecuador were not only still looked comfortable, but they were back into that cruise control, control mode. And that they also mentioned the fact that Ecuador have not conceded in 600 plus, plus minute, which is quite impressive. I mean, that they, they this is a team that has gone through that, that tough commie bowl kind of re region World Cup qualifier and the fact that they haven't conceded even do it going back to those qualifier is it's just to show you that again i might regret of what i pre predict that they're going to finish dead last and that i clearly underestimate how good ecuador could be in this tournament and then uh, the other thing i want to mention is that there was empty seats that was seen in in the the front row of the the stadium and that i think by the end of this game and really close to this game i mean it was half empty that that stadium and again that is definitely not a good look in a world cup i mean that was the big concern also coming into this world cup is there going to be a lot of empty seats that's going to be happening in this and at least in this one i mean i can understand why maybe some of the qatar supporter kind of got fed up because there was really not much to happen but at the same time it's still not a good look to see the 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 biggest competition in the world and you have empty seats in in opening night and just pretty much much uh it is a great great way to basically continue to you use this as uh, as fuel for the media to continue to portray negative image about about this and again i've seen a lot of negative kind of comments about this world cup in qatar and i i won't mention whether or not if i like it or not because i don't want to pick side in terms of that being a little bit too too political but again that seeing all these empty seats in the front row and also seeing these empty seats throughout the stadium it's not really good good look uh for qatar and the way that how this world cup is going to be hopefully we won't see that much especially when we see some of these bigger games that's going to be taking place uh el she then denied Preciado from from close range in the 55th minute before miguel uh for qatar hits it just wide from close range the shot were four to three in favor of ecuador and all three shots on target 
was in favor of Ecuador. In fact, those free shots on target would actually turns out to be the only free shots that we'll get throughout the entire game. Uh, a feed then blasts one high from long range, which that shot kind of really sums up Qatar night. Though uh, Monterrey had a big opportunity again for Qatar as he blasted just high from close range off the volley after just a rare great through ball that Qatar has had. I mean, again, throughout this game, it was definitely a disastrous class for Qatar where they just had, had nothing going like their defense wasn't wasn't good the midfield was getting absolutely overwhelmed and the attack was pretty much invincible throughout this full 90 minutes and because of that Ecuador uh in this one you know you know they easily just kind of walk away with 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 three points in this one as in the end they get the two nothing victory and the shots in this one only six shots compared to the five that Qatar has three shots on goal compared to none that Qatar has three shots off target compared to the five that Qatar had there was no shot that was blocking this one, and possession-wise, 53% possession compared to 47% possession that Qatar has in this one. And again, it was not really the most entertaining game to watch if you're a neutral, and a lot of that has to do to the fact that, again, Qatar, they just didn't really put a lot of pressure on Ecuador. Ecuador, once they were up to nothing, they were easily in cruise control and it's just getting to a point where it started becoming a bit of a training session where ecuador was just kind of knocking the ball around and not even taking a lot of risk knowing the fact that they may worry that that qatar could find that one good opportunity to get themselves back into the game and yeah again this definitely will not be one of the most mem memorable opener in the world cup to remember to do remember in fact i think when you look at the past couple of world cup pretty much this is going to be the, the most forget gettable one consider we have some classic kind of world cup opener in the past couple of the edition but let's just hope it's going to be a little bit better especially uh when we get into to the the group stage action really start to go into full slate where we're going to start having three games tomorrow and then four games the the very next day but at least from this game what we learn is the fact that ecuador yeah you know this is a team that that again i, I think they they can definitely be a team that not only can make it kid through the group but they can definitely surprise uh, some people with the performance that they they put and that Qatar in this one again they need they need a big bounce back in a big way because they also mentioned his stats where uh teams that won their first game they they have like an 86 percent percent percentage of moving on to the next round and the team that loses something is like 20 something percent so the odds are definitely stacked against the host and not to mention all uh, they still have some very tough team to face i mean senegal and and Netherlands is the next two teams that they're gonna face in the group stage and those two teams you know they depending on how their resort is gonna be you know it's not gonna be be easy and especially the way that Qatar play play in this opening game I mean I, I don't I don't see how they they can of course get get uh to move on or even even get a point out of this I mean this was just an abysmal performance by the host and they also even mentioned this is the first time we have seen a host nation lose on on opening night which is kind of surprising because I thought it might have happened been before in the World Cup, but no, this is the first time we've seen a a a, a host have lost a wor World Cup game, and it's not like the fact that the 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 host would lose a heartbreaker one. This was pretty much decided that in the the first half, and like I said, let's just hope we're gonna get some some better game that is gonna be happening tomorrow. But that being said, let me know in the comments below what do you think of this game, and like I said, tomorrow we get three games that is gonna make happen. Thing. and the most important one is the u.s taking on wales and you know i'm gonna go go deep dive in terms of that that game even if i'm pro unfortunately will not be able to watch that that game live because i'll be pretty much be working king uh throughout that game is ha going to happen well maybe i'll just kind of sneak around it and just at least catch a couple of minutes or even a couple of seconds of the game but in terms of the full game I'll only watch it when, of course, I get off work. But, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys see a like, smash the subscribe button. And, yeah, I, of course, will see you guys next time.